Hi there folks, welcome back to another video. And today, I'm gonna to do a product review. And this is gonna be on the New Air 122 quart car freezer refrigerator. So as you can see, this is no small unit. It's approximately 40 by 22 by 21 inches tall. <laughs> and it's sturdy, I mean, it's not going anywhere. So, I'm really into sturdy. If you're careful, mind your back, lift with your legs. Even an old person like me can actually lift the unit and put it where I want to. So obviously when this thing is packed full of food, it's gonna be a lot heavier. And I would highly, highly recommend, especially our seniors, um, be careful when lifting and get a person to help you. So of course in that case, you're gonna have one person grab here. The other person's gonna grab by this handle right here. You might wanna use gloves in the hot Arizona sun. This thing, because it's black, gets really hot. Be careful of touching this metal bottle opener. It's really handy, but it's super hot. For a big unit like this, New Air was really smart to put this collapsible pull bar. There we go, back in place, and out and locked in place, ready to operate. So some reviewers have criticized the small wheels, but they look pretty sturdy to me. And uh, I'll just give it a test by rolling it over all this mulch. Let's go. I need to be running more, get back to in a good running shape. So here's something I really, really like, and I would have never thought of. So, okay, say you've got this unit in the back of your SUV, and when you open, of course, the trunk to the SUV, you can get in to get your drinks or whatever you want. But check this out. Somebody wanted to reach into the back of the vehicle without getting out of the car. These things are reversible. There we go. So I thought that was really, really clever. I really like these latches. They're really easy to open. And when they shut, it's just good and sturdy. And now they're connected nicely. If this was just sitting in my cabin, uh, one way for me to power it would be to just plug it in. So here's the extension cord. And this is the unit here that plugs into the power section here. I don't know how I do this, but I ended up getting uh, dirt in here. And so I cleaned it out pretty well, but it doesn't seem to be a problem. So what I'm more interested in is operating this off of a solar setup. So New Air sent me this super little lithium battery and the solar panel. and then hooked up the solar panel right into here, you should see a green light saying the battery is on and a little row of blue lights that are flashing saying that we're charging from the solar panel. So naturally, before you're gonna go on a trip, you'll want this uh, lithium battery completely charged So the little battery and the solar panel comes as a unit from New Air, but uh, my understanding is that you can purchase just the battery. So you might want to connect with New Air currently and ask them. So naturally, some of you folks might be worrying that if you use the uh, cigarette lighter accessory unit here, that your car battery is going to get run down during the night and that's not going to be good. The great thing is New Air thought of that, and there's a mode you can select that's a safety feature that when your car battery gets really low, the refrigerator just kicks off. And so essentially, it's going to preserve uh, that car battery, and you'll be good to start the next morning. So I realize there's RVers who are going to be pulling into places that have electrical hookups. So if you don't even need the lithium battery 
then you're good. You can just use the power supply and plug it into wherever you're staying. So I've got the refrigerator freezer unit underneath uh, a shaded area under my shade umbrella there. So it won't have to work quite as hard if it's in the shade. And I've got the solar panels all set up. So hopefully you can see there folks uh, inside. This is the left compartment identified by this uh, grayed in area. It's 50 degrees. The right hand compartment is 54 degrees. So I want to set the different compartments. If I hold down this wheel and the plus sign, now this is for the right hand compartment. It's now going to be minus four. There we go. And it shut off, but it remembered that it's supposed to go to minus four. And now the other one, and it's also going to go to minus four. And that's as cold as this can go in Fahrenheit. For my friends back in Canada, the home country, you can, or the UK or abroad, you can put this into Celsius as well. And in the manual, it shows you how. So you can see the unit is charging. So any person who's purchased a brand new refrigerator or freezer and set it up is aware that it takes um, several hours for the unit to get the proper uh, temperature for freezing and cooling. So this is no exception. So you have to be patient with it like any other unit, but it actually reaches its desired uh, temperature that you set it at pretty quickly, I found. So it looks like we got a bit of late monsoon weather happening. So I better end this demo for now and we'll pick it up tomorrow. Oh, and I think a little bit of wet on the exterior of the unit's fine, but I'm gonna play it safe by putting it under uh, cover. And so it won't be getting in these torrential monsoon rains that's coming. So it's gotten really windy and the uh, solar panel connected to the refrigerator or freezer just blew over. So I had to prop it up. So it's 5.30 at night, and so the solar panel here is still uh, producing power and charging the refrigerator unit. And let's see just how cold this is now after running pretty much all day on just the solar panel. So you'll see by the flashing bar there that uh, the panel is putting in power to, uh, to the battery. And uh, the left hand compartment is 12 degrees Fahrenheit. The right hand compartment is 16 degrees Fahrenheit. So after running all day, these Gatorades are frozen solid. So these items I had in the freezer section here uh, in the uh, <laughs> tray here. And interestingly enough, they don't seem as frozen, even though the thermometer says they should be super frozen. Could be when I threw them in here, they weren't totally frozen anyway. And they need longer to freeze. Got some muffins here I want to freeze to, to keep well. But the most important thing is I put these frozen vegetables in here and they are indeed frozen. So my thinking is that down at the bottom here, it would have been even colder. There was a little bit of liquid at the very bottom here, and that's totally frozen. So this is the scenario where, uh, with the hot Arizona sun, up near the door, things might not be quite as severely frozen. But the good news is, if you put something in there already frozen, it does still stay frozen, which is great. So this unit was running all day, just plugged into the solar. That's all that was keeping these two compartments that were set on temperatures designed to keep things frozen. And it did its job all day. So I ran this unit for three days just on the solar panel alone. And of course at night, uh, there was no solar power at all, but things were so cold that the next morning things were cold enough that when the solar panel kicked in gear again, 
things drop down to freezing again. So I was pretty impressed, to be honest. I asked the question, well, who would really use one of these and who would it work for really well? And I would say what comes to mind is fishermen, for example, you can throw your catch in here and keep it totally frozen. And also you could be out somewhere where you're just using the solar panel and you're still keeping things really cold, which is great. Also, I'm thinking of uh, waterfowl or duck hunters. Another great scenario. Throw your game in here and you're good as well. So folks who know me might be going, well, look, Don, you're a birder. You sometimes go birding for a couple weeks at a time. Would this unit work for you? And it would if I was with one of my companions with their pickup. We could pop it in the back of the pickup, which we do anyway. Oh, and by the way, when we do that, have you ever used those white styrofoam coolers that you throw ice in the bottom? Oh, but after a couple days, ugly. And we're talking half swollen up hot dogs floating around in the bottom of the thing and pallid looking cheese and other things floating. Nasty. Not the case here. So I'm anxious to take this guy birding when I have one of my buddies with their pickup. So a logical point would be, this is a really big unit just for birding, Don, and it is, but that was not my entire purpose. I was thinking if I grew some veggies, then I could use this to keep them frozen for months on end. And the big reason I chose the new air, that solar panel capability, because I am really frugal when it comes to my electricity. So let's say on your excursion, you've got no end of drinks. Want to see how much capacity this thing has? This is a five gallon bucket. No problem. Of course, you might say logically, look at, I'm not going to be putting five gallon buckets in my refrigerator, freezer, cooler. Um, I'm just going to be putting a few cases of beverages. Well, there's no question there's room for those. So I rarely buy cases of stuff, but I did want to show you folks um, what I might end up putting in this unit. And you can see just how much space there is for drinks. So for folks unlike me and my thinking, having both compartments full of frozen vegetables for my home and strictly wanting it for RVing and going off grid uh, to have some fun, is New Air makes a lot of different models of this and much, much smaller. So you might want to check them out. I'll leave a link to their website in the uh, description of this video. So I want to thank New Air for giving me the opportunity to try this out. And folks, remember that um, New Air isn't paying me to do an advertisement for this at all. Uh, what I do get is I get to uh, have this unit. I also get a little bit of a bonus if you buy one of these units through the link here in the description of this video. So as always, folks, thanks so much for watching my videos. Please give her a thumbs up. And also, if you'd like to subscribe, please subscribe. There'll be uh, lots of videos showing how to live off grid here in Southeast Arizona. And I really appreciate you watching this. Thank you so much. See you on the next video.